Greetings, everyone, and welcome to Anime Night in the Dojo. Today's feature show, My Hero Academia, Season 7. Uh, yep, MHA, Season 7, Episode 15. Welcome back to the Dojo. I'm Ryu. That's Age. We're back for more Anime Night in the Dojo. And, well, last week we went full heteromorph, uh, stuff like that. Um, Spinner, as you can see here. Um, well, Spinner has left the building. At least his consciousness it has. He's he's pretty much just like uh, a raging Hulk at this point. Um, has very little mental capacity at this point, even though he uh, is trying to regain control. But uh, that didn't work out too well. Um, we got uh, Shoji's backstory as to what was going on with him last week. Um, he's actually had... After making this like transformation into his like scaled form... He actually has had a bit of a resurgence in cognition. Like, he was pretty coherent towards the end there. Yeah. So we'll just have to see what goes on with that. Um, this whole uh, battlefield is uh, dedicated to uh, uh, reclaiming Kuragiri. Um, so, you know, a uh, major piece for the, uh, the antagonist side. So, Yeah, Kuragiri is, Kuragiri is one of the most important battlefields for them because if they can actually get Kurigiri back under under their control, they can just freely teleport people around again and basically totally uh, negate the whole splitting the villains up plan to begin with. Yep. So yeah, um, I assume we'll probably be continuing with this, uh, this sequence here because that's what we kind of got left on, but uh, they have been bouncing around, so we'll we'll just have to see what uh, what they do with this. Because again, I'm not going to rehash everything, but there's a battlefield going on in like eight different locations, so we'll just have to see where they are week to week. It's that simple. <laughs> yeah, we've been bouncing around a lot, and like we haven't and we haven't seen some of the other battlefields in quite a while. Like we haven't seen the Toga battlefield. We still don't know what's going on with the Doctor, if anyone's even going for him. <clears throat> um, last we saw of him was just him freaking uh, him talking to the guards and didn't seem like anything had really happened yet. Mm -hmm. uh, I do know at some point here soon we're going to get more on the Gigantomachia front with uh, because of the whole thing with freaking... Uh, Ashina. Right. I, I know, like, her fight has been in the anime already because there was the whole thing. Once again, I mentioned the whole controversy of people, like, in insisting headcanon that she was black to find out she's not. All right. Uh, that's a whole other discussion, and we'll talk about it at least a little bit when it happens, but I'll just leave it in as stupid. Uh... <laughs> So, yeah, not, not a huge amount to really say going into this because we just kind of have to, once again, wait and see what happens here. So, um, yeah, let's just uh, go ahead and push some buttons and see what they throw at us this week. So, here goes something. Kurugiri's quirk will decide the winner of this conflict. For Tomura's sake, you must become our hero. There's uh, nobody behind you, man. <laughs> Shoji got through to your followers. I know what you want, but he won't be your secret weapon. I saw them, and I couldn't raise my weapon against them. Stop spiraling, you fool! Be rational! That octopus is becoming a problem. The heteromorphs have finally radicalized enough to become a massive meat shield for us. Their passion is supposed to make us an unstoppable force. I was hollow inside. So when passion filled me, I took a stand. Think about how you're using your anger! I did think about it, and all I wanted was to keep following him. And they 
won't even know what hit him. If a butterfly beats its wings in Brazil, could that lead to a hurricane in Texas? Will superhuman society, which began with a single glowing baby, cause the end of life as we know it? One person has the power to change the world. Meryl, read the teleprompter. Humanity must act. Here's the truth. Our leaders are selling us out to all for one. We have to stand against uh, him. Meryl! Cut to commercial, quick! Alex, I'm gonna have my head for this! Well, who would have thought the weather girl would step up for something like that? <laughs> it's unreal. What is this power? Someone's covered your travel costs. Yeah. Yeah. It keeps getting stronger. I might have a hard time controlling the water. Monoma, you okay? I just had a thought. This will be in the history books, right? I gotta make sure the Ministry of Education says I won the battle for us. <laughs> fewer people on our side, the harder it is for me to escape. They might be able to catch me soon. And I've only got enough of Jean's blood for 30, maybe 40 minutes. Even if I drink it now and turn the tables on them, Sad Man's parade will be trapped here, off the mainland. And if the heroes find out I'm wreaking that much havoc, I doubt they'll send a ship and risk me hijacking it. They warped me to an island. Does that mean they already know about Jean's blood? Himiko Toga, what is it that you desire? I want to kill Hawks, then slaughter every other hero. Scatter me across the battlefields, Kurogiri! Oh no, you don't! You can't! Well, there's preview that we don't watch, and uh... Well, once again, not a huge amount to say during this one. Just kind of had to take it all in. Um, it was what it was. Uh, th this this whole situation with the heteromorphs here is uh, it's kind of like um, at the end of the day, while you do have like like this guy who's like kind of like a lieutenant, uh, so, like some of the uh, uh, heteromorphs that are like really dedicated to the gauze and like are like super all in on something like this and would be willing to pull the proverbial trigger in, in any kind of situation like this at the end of the day the majority of these people they're just civilians mm -hmm. when they're opposed with the act like the the actual like real life ramifications of what they're like being asked to do like in this case of uh you know going after the uh the doctors here and like the the hospital staff to achieve what they're wanting to do is like the average person is not going to be able to pull that trigger you know what i mean and it has even just like in this in the case of like this this guy right here if one person wavers in the crowd it has an effect on collective morale you know what I mean? So yeah, m morale is a chain reaction. If one person rallies, then it causes other people to rally. If one person wavers, it causes other people to waver. Yep. So at the end of the day, these are just normal citizens. They're not. They're, they're just normal citizens that have that have gotten together in like a surge in a mob, uh, and, and while they did have like their leadership and stuff like that, that were willing to go to those links. Um, Spinner did have, you know, the, the followers that he always wanted, like people behind him in this case. However, they weren't as dedicated to the cause as he was. You know what I mean? Because they, well, it's not like they, th these are all just people that were picked up. You know what I mean? They haven't like lived with Shigaraki and, you know, become the, super the dedicated to the here, cause and whatnot. The, the problem here is difference in ideologies the heteromorphs that are rioting are rioting just because they want better conditions for heteromorphs the uh formal liberation front members are just there to use them to get to achieve their own agenda and spinner is only here to help shigaraki 
n- none of the three groups actually have aligned ideals. It's literally just a circle of people using each other. Right. So generally speaking, that never really turns out well. Um, so, you know, Shoji got through to them. Uh, but the, uh, the, the major case here is the fact that uh, they were able to, while they were able to stop, you know, the surge and the mob, they were not able to stop Spinner from, you know, unleashing Kuragiri here, which Age mentioned it during the outro there, so we had to take that out. But uh, Kuragiri being back on the board pretty much negates uh, the majority of the hero side of the plan. Because now the villains can go wherever they want. Yeah, it, it negates the hero's plan like entirely, and it actually like uses it against them because now the heroes are split up, but the villains don't have to be. Yep. Like we got at the end there, Toga nopes off with Kiragiri and Tuyu and Dochako, who are supposed to be fighting her, are now are now the ones stuck on the island, not her. Right. And. uh... <laughs> Uh, unsurprisingly, uh, Togo wanting to go after Hawks, who just happens to be on the field with All for One, uh, that's, a, that's a pretty big deal because that battlefield is pretty much just All for One for the most part. Uh, with some it's the only like, battlefield. It's the only battlefield where the villains are technically losing right now, right? Because All for One is the only actual like threat on that battlefield and he's already dead he's just on a timer basically right so yeah i mean this this is a serious problem toga using you know twice's sad man parade to its like max capacity is already a problem for this place you, you guys see the other problem it's freaking dobby <laughs> Who, who is, like, uh, I forget her name, I think it's Blazin or something, mentions that, like, uh, it doesn't make sense how he's still, like, existing. It's like, yeah. well, hate is apparently one hell of a drug. <laughs> yeah, we still have a few, like, unexplained powers at the moment. Like, we just still have no clue what the hell is up with Toga's perception blocking. And Dobby, we still have no idea what it is that actually is keeping, giving him the ability to stay alive through sheer force of will the way he is. One would assume it's the power that he copied from Shoto. Whatever that ability is, is maybe... Well, not just... Tempering his body. That is probably helping in the this exact situation like moment here but just in general he should have been dead already right like he has inexplicably had some way to just basically be too angry to die which isn't the only explanation we've got so far when there's got to be something that's like actually like you know keeping his body from burning yep so yeah um we, I jokingly mentioned one of the few things that we were able to say during this episode was uh, that they, they were literally all over the place in this one. Mm-hmm. Pretty much uh, the majority of the battlefields were shown off. Uh, the only thing that we really didn't get was uh, the Gigantomachia battlefield and like the original place like where Fat Gum and uh, like the plant guy are, that kind of stuff. Yeah, we didn't get we didn't get the assassin battlefield. We didn't get the doctor still. We didn't get Gigantomachia. Though, like I said, I know we're going to get Gigantomachia at some point in the next few episodes. But, yeah, we haven't yet, still. Right. So, yeah. Um, They kind of hinted at, like, what her deal was with the perception blocking here. Um, It made it sound like she was using other people somehow to make it seem like she's there but she's not really there when it's somebody well, else yeah no it's they didn't really explain how it works they just Ochako apparently put together the limit of one of the limitations on it in that she can only block her block perception of her 
to like a couple of people at a time. It's like the same thing as like freaking uh, Emerald and Ruby, where it's like the main way you counter her is you have a crowd. Right. Because she can only cause uh, a couple of people at a time to hallucinate. Yeah. But even Toga herself said something to the effect of them losing numbers on her their side is like a detriment to her blocking so well the re i t the reason i take that is because she's also aware of her own weakness if she can only blo she can only uh, block the perception of so many people so the less people on her side the more people are paying attention to her and the harder time she has to actually sneak around yeah fair enough so yeah um pretty much just all over the place here uh, we'll just have to see where this goes from here, but, uh, the, uh, the sad man parade being what it is, being able to overwhelm that battlefield is going to be a big deal. Um, so we'll just have to see what they do with it. Uh, yeah, the problem with, with the whole situation now is just basically that there is no counter to sad man parade. The only way you can prevent Sadman Parade is stop it from going off in the first place or having enough firepower to literally annihilate the entire horde instantaneously. Right. Which, even Endeavor doesn't have the firepower to annihilate the entire horde right now. Yep. So the, the only thing that might end it is if Toga literally runs out of time. Because yeah, you'd assume that... Uh, even though she's using Jean's power, when she runs out of time, just everything is just going to poof. Yeah, that, that's what I was going to say. It was like, as it stands right now, the only way to really counteract it is... The only hard counter to Sadman Parade itself is to be able to annihilate the clones faster than they're created, which they create, the, they create themselves exponentially. So once the Horde's already this big, you'd have to be able to, you'd have to take out the horde instantly uh but as far as toga is concerned the only thing that we can really that would really be able to be done is you have to be able to find the original toga in the horde or run her out of time which we've a we still don't have any actual like confirmation to it, but we've assumed for a bit now that when she's using the quirk of someone, it makes her run out of time faster. So that is a possibility that it will she will run out sooner than the 30 to 40 minutes she originally gave herself based on the quantity of blood. Right. Now, there is something interesting here. And this is kind of one of those throwaway lines. But it's something to think about, but it might not come up at all. When Toga was like near death that triggered the original Sad Man Parade, Gene was talking about how if he could make a copy of Toga and then use the copy's blood for a transfusion to save her life. See what I mean here? What, yeah. Do you think it would be possible, since she is copied as, as him, if that's... I, I doubt it's something they're going to gonna go into. But you know I what I'm getting at here, is if she could use a copy's blood to then basically become infinite. Well, yeah, so I feel like it works the way Twice presented it, in that, like, if he created a copy of someone, you could then use that copy's blood. Once again, you know, so as long as you didn't do enough damage to it to modify it. Um, however, this case, I don't think it would work because these aren't copies of twice. These are copies of Toga. Yeah, it's kind of just kind of one of those weird technicalities, right? It's like, still technically her just using yeah, his quirk. Because like, like if what you're saying is true then it wouldn't actually matter how much blood she had 
she could just, if she had even a drop of someone's blood to turn into them, she could just turn into them and then suck her own blood, basically. Right. Because at the end of the day, uh, when she turns into someone, it's basically just like her putting on a suit. Yeah, like... She's not actually changing her own anatomy. It would still be her blood in all these places. Yep. So yeah, it's just it's just kind of like one of those interesting like side things to kind of think about because it was something that Gene said he could potentially do. Yeah, like I said, I'm pretty sure it would have worked in the original context he gave of him copying someone for her to bleed to use her power. Uh but it wouldn't work. Like, her having his power right now, I'm pretty sure she, once again, could also use it in that context of, like, she could copy someone else to basically have an infinite blood bank of that person. But she, I don't think she would be able to use it on Gene, because, once again, she doesn't have access to Gene. It's just copies of herself, of herself looking like Gene. Right. So, yeah, it's just kind of one, one of those weird technicality things to talk about. Um... The, the the one thing here too is uh you know how how about the random American weather girl just completely going rogue and just like starting a rally against all for one as as just kind of like a, a side thing because they might not go into it but it was reasonably implied that the American president in this show is an all for one supporter mm -hmm. so it, it'll just be kind of like interesting to see like where like if they do anything with this. But as is pointed out, like, you know, if Japan falls, they're coming for the rest of the world. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's basically, this is the last chance really to stop for one from taking over. Because if he manages to secure Japan, then he, no one will be able, no, no one will be able to stop him. It'll become, become too strong. Right. And like she was pointing out here, uh... <laughs> This whole thing started with her pointing out the fact that uh, all the fighting going on in Japan is having adverse weather reactions across the entire world because of the extreme use of quirks going on. Right. It's kind of like, um, for anybody who knows history, it's kind of like when that South American volcano erupted back in the 1600s uh, that affected literally grain production and the whole world. Mm-hmm. It's those kind of like cataclysmic events that can just affect literally the whole world. And this, with what's going on in Japan, like especially with all the like superheated stuff that like uh, um, the Todoroki family is doing on top of literally everything else as well, uh, is yeah, pretty there's insane. Actually, there's actually a number of fire quirks going off right now, but they're obviously like the biggest contributors. But yeah, you're talking about the Little Ace Age. Yeah. So it will be interesting to see what they do with this. But once again, there is uh, all kinds of stuff going on. Um, with all the stuff going on, I am kind of surprised that this is supposed to be like 21 episodes, but maybe there's some kind of like, uh, um, maybe they kind of want to do like a, a special like full core season to kind of wrap it up kind of deal. Um, yeah, that's like, what I was like, saying. Really. Like final chapters, kind of like what Attack on Titan did with final chapters, but that's a whole other discussion. Mm -hmm. That, but something like that. Yeah, that's what I was kind of saying when we were going into this. When we first heard it, that it was only going to be twenty-one episodes, and the info we were having uh, that I had at least uh, about uh, the fact that the manga was ending was whether or not they were going to try to wrap this all up in one season, or if they were just the reason they were only doing 21 episodes was just to kind of cut it off a little early so that way they have enough source material to do it like at least one full core as like an actual finale right which it definitely seems like they're going for the we're doing one more season of probably one core right. to just be like the actual finale and that this is just going to basically be the majority of the the major fighting but then saving, like, the actual final fight itself against, like, All for One, Shigaraki, whoever, uh, for the final season. And, you know, then having, like, the prologue and stuff like that. Yep. But uh, 
I mean, since we are 15 episodes in, a reasonable amount of stuff has happened during this season. Yeah. Uh, and we still have six episodes left, assuming it goes, it's only 21. Only 21 episodes is still a lot. Uh, but still, um, we'll, we'll just have to see. But six episodes is plenty of time to get a, a bunch more of this stuff in here. So we'll just have to see pacing wise what happens. But um, so far, it's been fairly well done. So we'll, we'll just have to see. And once again, since I have no manga knowledge on this, um, I don't, I, it would be a massive endeavor to read through all of MHA before like the end of this season. And I probably don't have the time to do that. But it's definitely one of those things that I want to go back and read and at some point talk about like the, the differences between the source material and the TV show, like what they do with it. So um, yeah, that, that's just gonna be something to for the future of the channel is like um, just kind of like uh, when I have time to squeak in like uh, source material because for some of the shorter stuff uh, it shouldn't take that long to read through it you know what I mean uh, but for something like MHA that's like 450 chapters we're talking like almost 5,000 pages of content <laughs> I mean you, you might be able to read it by the time the final season actually comes out right if you tried, but like, yeah, there's like no way you're gonna, unless you really fucking went hard on it. I, I don't think there's any. If I had nothing else to do for the next two months, and I dedicated like you know maybe like fifty chapters a day or something, uh, but no, <laughs> it, to a lesser extent, reading that much for me is kind of like the subtitles thing that I've talked about. Where if I read too much, then I'll start getting nauseated and just can't do it. Deal with it. So uh, there, there's only so much I could read in a day before it would be detrimental to my whatever causes me to feel nauseous. So, yeah. Um, well, while, while it's not the same thing as like stuff moving behind subtitles and stuff like that, it's still just, I don't know. It's like being seasick, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, it will be interesting to see if they do anything more with like the American side of stuff or the rest of the world kind of stuff. But uh they are. They do have that movie coming out here shortly, um, and we don't. I don't know when that's going to be dubbed, but kind of like how the Spy Family movie took a reasonable amount of time to get dubbed. So we'll just have to see. But uh, when that movie comes out, we'll do that. But uh, you know, some of the stuff in the movies is canon, some of it's not. We'll just have to see what happens with that. Most of the movie stuff is canon, from what I know. The only yeah. thing that was like non-canon, I believe, was like wasn't even one of the movies it was like the ova thing it was like the like freaking uh the zombie survival mini arc thing right yeah but anyway bunch of stuff happened in this one we we were all over the place it'll be interesting to see where they go from here with the sad man sad man parade stuff um you know still several other battlefields with stuff going on but now with kuragiri being back on the villain side uh, a bunch of the stuff is going to obviously be condensed uh, for the villain side onto certain places. Uh, and the heroes are just going to be kind of left with cleanup and, you know, ha having to try to obviously hear like Ochako, Sue, the rest of them. All they can really do is handle what's left on the island and getting off the island is going to be a massive endeavor. Uh, yeah, well, that's one of the things I was going to mention. Oh. Two things to mention, I guess. Uh, one, because you stopped, like, right here, it is worth mentioning that uh, Toga did actually save Sue. Yeah. Uh, like, she baited her into triggering the Nomu, but then saved her from actually like, dying to the Nomu. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> all she used it for was just, you know, to get enough of an opening to actually drink Jean's blood. Yeah. Uh, but the other thing I was going to say, the bigger thing, was just that Kuragiri being in play opens the conflict up significantly to potentially going to a global level. Because now it's not just about the individual couple of battlefields, now we're once again onto the grand all heroes versus all villains front. Yep. Which could very well involve the other uh, countries finally rallying and actually sending support. Yep. Because you, you got to figure there's uh there's got to be more quirks out there like Kurigiri's. 
yeah, teleport quirks aren't unique to him. Like, they're just extremely rare. Like, friggin', they immediately identify Kuragiri's quirk as, oh, they're... The villains have have a uh, teleportation quirk. How did they manage to get a hold of that? Yeah. So like they're a documented documented thing and known. It's just once again extremely rare. We've only actually seen two in the series so far. Yep. Yeah, as it stands, I mean, Hawks is going to have to literally deal with the ghost of his past here. Um, Endeavor is going to have to deal with Dobby now. Um, and all for one now has a pretty open path to go wherever the hell he wants. So his current intention is to get to Shigaraki. Yep. Uh, but yeah, he's probably just going to nope out using this as a diversion. Yep. And yes, once again, this is, uh, as he points out, this is all Hawk's fault. Yeah. Because Hawks uh, got overzealous and assassinated Gene when Gene was fully capable of someone. It was someone that they could definitely actually have controlled. Now, instead, they have a completely unconsolable Toga with his power, who's definitely can't, who definitely cannot be controlled. Yep. I mean, it's one of those things. Uh, he, he Hawks did make a choice, but uh, you know. It uh, just made twice a martyr, and yeah, well, yeah. Like if he had just if if they had made like an effort to capture or turn Gene, it pretty much every scenario would have turned out better than what they got. Which you know is angry Toga, who is capable of pushing Sadman Parade well beyond what Gene ever was capable of. Right. So yeah, um, things are just escalating quickly all over the place, and uh, it's definitely a thing. So um, definitely looking forward to seeing where this goes. I, once again, do have a spoiler, but it was something that we talked about in previous seasons. Um, talk about it when we get there, but it's not surprising. But it is quite important, so uh, I can't really talk about it. But um, just knowing that it's there... Uh, I, I don't know how or when this event occurs and the people that are uh, associated with it or where they're at. I just know that uh, it happens. So it will be interesting to see where it happens and uh, how like it came about kind of deal. But uh, yeah, it, it will be interesting to see because uh, we're getting close to that, uh, that sequence. Um, but uh, once again, I don't know exactly where it happens. I just know uh, the characters involved, and it's something that we have talked about in the past as a possibility of uh, uh, being a thing. So, um, yeah. Yeah, we're getting closer to my spoiler as well, though. As it stands right now, my spoiler probably won't hit until next season. I assume your spoiler has something to do with Stain. Uh, no. Uh, unless Stain is somehow adjacent to what happens, but uh, yeah, it has face value, it has nothing to do with Stain. Though it might randomly through, I don't know, nonsense? I, we'll just have to see. But uh, it should be in the next one or two episodes here. So, anyway. Yeah, because I'm just kind of trying to think back to what it possibly could have been that was spoiled, but and like one of the only things that I can think of that was like a bigger prediction that we made previously was uh, the whole thing that like Stain would take one for the team for freaking uh, All Might at some point, but All Might currently isn't any real threat. Right. Uh, I, I have no I have no knowledge of anything Stain related from the last time we saw him. I'll just say that. So this is something completely unrelated to Stain, unless he randomly has a hand in what happens here. So anyway, um, and once again, I don't know completely what happens. I just know some characters that are involved in doing something. So <laughs> yeah, as it stands, the only thing I personally know at this point, spoiler wise, is just the 
the one big spoiler that's like I said, probably not coming till next season, and then freaking the fact that we're getting Ashido fighting the goons at freaking uh Gigantomachi up front here at some point in the next few episodes because of the whole controversy thing. Right. Always gotta love controversy stirring up shit, but what are you gonna do? But anyway, another solid episode. Um we were all over the place, so that was fun. Um not a huge amount to say during, but I mean that is what it is. But we mostly talk after the fact anyway. So ladies and gentlemen, people of YouTube beyond hyper watching. I always appreciate you stopping by and hanging out with her in the dojo for more anime night in the dojo. And this was My Hero Academia, season seven, episode fifteen. So have a good morning, evening, afternoon. Whatever it is for you. Have a good one. See you next time. Hey everyone, Victoria here. If you enjoyed the video, please consider pushing those like and subscribe buttons. Your support is greatly appreciated. Thanks again for your time, and we hope to see you again in the future.